And on that note, welcome to our Africa Tech segment right here on Network Africa. Well, the African continent has witnessed a huge improvement in internet connectivity as a result of improved telecoms infrastructure characterized by intercontinental connectivity and terrestrial fiber networks. However, infrastructure investment is not sufficient but it's very essential to improve internet access services experience for users in Africa. Many countries on the continent are affected by the slow growth in the development of internet access services, such as the high pricing of internet access services for end users, which cause low patronage. Mr. Ahmad Mukoshi is the founder and CEO of GigaLayer, that's a domain and web hosting company, and he joins me right now in studio to elaborate on this matter. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Ahmad. It's good to have you. It's good to have you. Too, I just, I'll start by asking you how we can see significant improvement in, as regards, you know, internet services for users like myself. Well, um, internet has been very um, in, low, in low penetration in Nigeria. Um, however, this has changed because mm -hmm. There was uh, the rural area where people have no access to these devices. Is the demand that causes the uh, is the devices that causes the demand for the internet. When um, services like online shopping, e-payment, and the rest of these things, they push people to demand internet more. And when people demand more internet, then the service providers will then deliver the internet. So mm -hmm. that's what's causing the uh, the gap between um, accessibility and the price range. Because when there's low demand for the internet, the service providers would not want to set up. I will cite an example for you on that. Um, I was in Sudan, and uh, what I found out is that they have the cheapest internet than Nigeria. Wow. Um, the internet plan I was subscribing for 10 gigabyte of data for less than 2,000 naira. What? And it's very fast. And so the fascinating thing is that the people there um, cannot afford it, and still, it's still more expensive. But the demand is there. People, uh, it's a rural area, so they're like living in a, in a very small com com community. So businesses and people have built so many things that people need internet to use, and there's the demand for it. So the service providers are their demand providing it for them. Now, now in cases where we have, you know, the, um, the high demand, but supply can't meet up like what we have in Nigeria, are we just supposed to give up or is there something that can be done? Well, I think um, something can be done about that. Uh, we can already see that uh, telecommunication service providers are extending 3G network down yes. to rural areas. Where I come from, it's Sokoto, and uh, okay. we, we don't even have much internet service down there. But um, to my surprise, I just went there recently and I realized that there's 3G network available down there. Um, so the, the demand, like I said, is causing this telecos to really step up. I was at the Glow office and I asked the, uh, the lady there, um, before I know there was no 3G now, but you have 3G, so what spiked up the, why did you people bring the 3G? And he said so many people were coming to their office complaining that they can't use their Facebook, they can't use their this and that, and so they keep sending back the reports and, and all of that. and. Uh, they have 3G. So it is a lot has 3G and the rest of them. Okay. Uh, uh, the um, at, this, at this point, you know, you mentioned what, what happened in Sudan, yeah. where the internet was cheap. Yeah. I think 10 gig gigabytes, like you said, yeah. for just under 2,000 naira. Yeah. Is there something that, you know, we can see? If, is there a way that government policies could sort of, you know, help to make internet like that <laughs> become you know, be reflected here. Can we have a carbon copy of that happening here? It sounds like, you know, a dream, but... Um, yes, uh, I expect to see that happening in Nigeria because one of the things that I noticed there is that in, uh, the government has made it feasible for the businesses to have, um, for the telecos to provide internet power. So basically, they don't have all these mass stations and, and, and uh, generators and things, so the power was there available for them. And one more thing, I think uh, they give them some subsidy on that. Uh, so, so much subsidy for telecos to come and set up in Sudan, so that was very good. And I guess Nigerian, uh, Nigerian government can actually do something like that, encourage more telecommunication companies, which I think they're already trying, but I, I expect to see more being done on that. It, it, that will happen uh, maybe in time, but for now, what do you, uh, you know, I know this is your area, this is not mine, I'm not a guru or anything, <laughs> yes. but uh, for now, people like me who are going to wait for this policy to come in place, what do we do until then? To probably, ma you know, maximize the, the quality of internet that we, you know, we make use of. Because these challenges, 
uh, not exclusive to anybody. Any, everyone goes through them where th it's just it's not difficult. Sufficient. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, so what can we do? Yeah, so there are um, startups, um, because, you know, if you want, if, if the, the grown-ups are not able to solve the problem, the kids would definitely do. So the big businesses are not solving the problem, so I see startups coming up. Um, so there was this startup that was at uh, um, Demo Africa, and what they do was they they make internet accessibility affordable and cheaper by masking, by putting on some devices that uh, do an intranet with the internet. So basically, say you, you browse a page on Wikipedia and you read an article, the, their devices would store that on the device such that anybody within that range that connects to the network does not need to connect to the internet. So basically, the bill that was used for your own browsing of that page will be then served across uh, people on the platform. So basically, they don't need to spend much, and they offer that internet for free. Wow. So, yeah, so th the bill is being shared across the user. The more the network grows, the more the people are on it, the cheaper it becomes for people to That's use That's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. I've been speaking with Ahmad Mukoshi. He is the founder and CEO of Gigalaya. It's a domain and a web hosting company. And thank you so much for your thank time. You. Thank you very much. Well, at this point, here's a question of the day based on the discussion which we had with um, Sam or, or Nibanjo, we are asking how can unemployed Nigerian youth become more empowered? Feel, feel free to send your feedback to us either via email or Twitter. And if you would also like the copy of his book, 37 Business Thoughts, you can tweet at Net Africa CTV. The handle is right there on your screen. The first person to tweet and request for that book actually gets the book. Thank you so much for watching Network Africa. It's been a pleasure. I'm Cynthia Arendt.